On this week's epistle of a drier dose of Disney, Jared shares with us money-saving tips when visiting the Disney and Universal parks. Welcome to another episode of A Dryer Dose of Disney. I'm your host, Jared Dreyer. And today we've got an episode that a lot of you have been asking about that I'm sure is going to be a very popular episode. And that is, how do I save money when I go to the parks? As we all know, the parks are probably one of the most expensive vacations you can take. And saving money is definitely something on the forefront of most of our minds. We don't want to go out there and go into so much debt that we spend the next few years trying to get that all paid off. We want to be able to go out there, have a great time with our friends and family, and be able to come home with a little bit of money left in our pocketbook, if at all possible. So we want to talk about that today. How do you go to these parks? How do you save some money? What are the tips and tricks there? And actually, I've got a ton for you. So we're going to go through those, and we're going to have a good time. So definitely, you want to stay tuned. Our best tip is going to be at the very end. That's our I Can Do This All Day tip of the week. So you're going to want to stick around for that today. And speaking of, I can do this all day tip of the week. We have got our merchandise coming in. You guys can see the water bottle behind me over there, over my shoulder. We also have these really cool new large fanny packs. And these are the big ones that you can wear across your back. And this is my new bag I'm taking to the park because I can uh, fit a pair of flip-flops or shoes in here as well as my poncho. And it's a small enough bag that when I go to Universal, it will fit in the lockers if I ever need to do that. So uh, we definitely encourage you to check out our bags. We've also got backpacks and a couple other options there. And then, hey, we got one of our really cool shirts. So for those of you that are watching us on the YouTube version, Uh, You're going to be able to see this shirt that I'm wearing today, and I'm going to sit back so you guys can see it on camera. And it's a baseball style shirt. It's a two-tone, so white shirt with blue sleeves. I can do this all day. Again, that's available at our Etsy shop, so we encourage you guys to check it out. And then wherever you're listening to us today, go ahead and click that subscribe button. We definitely are looking for subscribers, so that way you get this content delivered to you immediately when it becomes available every single Tuesday because we do release our episodes every Tuesday. And as a matter of fact, um, this episode we're recording right now, this is our 12th episode, and I just loaded episodes 7 through 11 to be released over the next uh, five weeks. So you guys are going to be seeing those coming out through the end of September and October. And by the time you hear this one, those are already all live. But we try to stay anywhere from five to 10 weeks ahead in episode production. So that way you are never delayed when waiting for that episode to drop on a Tuesday. Those are going to come right into your format there. So if you're on a podcast platform, they're going to be downloaded automatically on YouTube. You're going to get a notification and you're going to be able to consume that content right away. And we're going to start talking about the difference between the Anaheim and Orlando parks. So if you're trying to decide between the two, the top things that are really cool in Anaheim versus the top things that are cool in Orlando. And then right after those, we are going to get into our rope drop strategies which are probably some of the coolest episodes you're going to hear where we talk about each and every single park. Where do you go? Where do you stand for rope drop? What are the best rides to do and how do you navigate the day? Because I can tell you for me and my family and friends, we typically don't have to wait in lines very often. We are usually ahead of the crowds. We're going through the rides very quickly. And then we utilize tools like single rider, which you heard in another episode. And that helps us avoid paying for things like Genie Plus or Lightning Lane. And we're able to stay, again, ahead of those crowds and have very minimal wait times. We are able to, throughout the course of a single day, go through an entire park of our choosing. So whether that's Universal or a Disney Park in Orlando or out in Anaheim, and we are able to ride everything we want to ride and still have leftover time if we ever want to go back and ride something else. You definitely want to tune in for those episodes. Those are coming here in the next few weeks. And I will say just at the rate we're going right now, those will probably be delivered as a Christmas gift right before the end of the year. And you guys will get access to all the parks. And again, we're going to do all four Disney Orlando, both of the Disney Anaheim parks, and then we're going to do Universal Hollywood as well as the Universal Parks in Orlando. So you definitely want to tune into those. So please click that subscribe button again. Dryer Dose of Disney, wherever you're listening to your podcast, or if it's out on YouTube, and you will get that content delivered to you once that's ready to go. So today, we're going to be talking about how to save money when you're going to the parks. Now, 
There are episodes or an episode out there already, and it's for our Patreon supporters. So again, if you find any tips or tricks that save you money or time, we encourage you go out and support us on Patreon. You're going to get early access to two of our episodes, the Butterbeer episode, which that Butterbeer is phenomenal, and to our How to Go to Disney for Almost Free episode, which my family has done twice, and we spent very little money going to Disney. So if money saving is right up your alley, you definitely want to go subscribe to that so you can get that content. But today we're going to talk about how to save money. Because we already have that episode out there available, I'm not going to get into the things like the hotels and the airfare and those bigger ticket items. Today we're only going to talk about the things that happen at the parks. So your dining, your experiences, those kinds of things. We're going to get down into a little more detail today and talk about what's worth it, what's not, and where you can save some money. So definitely this is going to be a great episode for you. But if you want those bigger things, I will encourage you definitely go check those out. Right off the bat, we give you a lot of options on our where to stay hotels versus on resort versus Airbnb. We give you a lot of info on that episode that talks about saving money. And that probably an Airbnb or Verbo is going to be the best way to save money as well as get the most space and the most bang for your buck. So we encourage you to check those out. For airfare, I'm just going to tell you right now, Southwest is the one that's got the best deals. They've got the best credit card. We'll put a link in this podcast so that you have that uh, link for Southwest and how you can save and get some miles there. But they also have their companion pass, which we've committed. Anytime they have a promo for the companion pass, we will put that out on our Facebook page. So that's one I don't talk a lot about, but definitely you want to follow us on Facebook because when those promos come out, they're quick. They may only last a week or two, and we will post those on our Facebook page. So all that housekeeping aside, let's dive into it. Let's save you guys some money. Let's talk about maybe you're going to the parks in the next couple of weeks here, and we're going to save you money uh, through all these tips and tricks. Let's go into the list here, and I'm going to count them up because I didn't even number them. I've got a a long list here on the screen, and I have more than a dozen uh, different ways to save money when you go to the parks, and we're going to talk through each one. So I will tell you, skip DVC. The Disney Vacation Club, that is one that you do not want to do. Ultimately, at the end of the day, the Disney Vacation Club is a timeshare program, and that is a good way if you're just that kind of person that you just want to make monthly payments, you kind of want to set it and forget it and not have to worry about it. And then when you're ready to go, you've got all those credits. If you like doing that, then by all means, go do DVC. But if you're the type of person that is pinching pennies and you are saving up to go to Disney and you don't have the luxury of having any additional expenses, don't do DVC. I work in finance. I do a lot with math. I do a lot with numbers. Um, I can crunch these things very quickly. And I can tell you, I have crunched the math on DVC versus what we pay to go to the parks. And DVC is more than double what we pay to go to the park. So keep that in mind. It's a very expensive program. It's very convenient. And of course, when we go through this list today, we're going to talk a lot about convenience on the other ones as well, because Disney likes to upcharge for convenience. And there's no question DVC is a convenience factor. So you're paying for it and paying for that convenience versus paying for the trip. If you're able to go out and book everything yourself, if you're willing to stay off resort, which I do recommend just because staying on resorts usually double the price, then DVC is not for you. So skip DVC. It's not worth looking at. I've even looked into, hey, are there ever sales on points or people trying to get out of their timeshare commitment? And are they willing to offload points very inexpensively? And it's all controlled. It's all through a single website. And no, there's no way to get easy points out there. So Skip DVC. Don't even look into it. It's not worth the time unless you're looking for that level of convenience. Number two on my list. You've probably already listened to the Genie Plus and Lightning Lane episode. If not, I'm going to encourage you go back and listen to that because we talk in detail about how those work, where the best parks are to use them, and should you use them or not. And in that episode, I talk about between the Genie Plus and Express Pass at Universal. To me, it's not worth it. You can still get to the front of the lines using single rider, using other uh, methods like going there early for rope drop and being first into the park. And you're going to shorten your wait times significantly just by doing that. So do you need to pay an extra 15 to $20 a day or over at Universal an extra like $80 a day to for this Express Pass or the Genie Plus or Lightning Lanes? No, by all means, you do not need to do that. 
In fact, in that episode, I tell you probably the only park that may be worth it is Magic Kingdom. And that's just because there are so many rides that do participate in Lightning Lane that it may be worth it at Magic Kingdom because there are more rides to cover and you have more opportunities to use it. But at the other parks, they're on rides that are going to have a shorter queue time anyways, and you're going to rope drop the busiest ride anyways at the beginning of your day just to get on that ride at the beginning and make sure that you hit it. And let alone, like I said earlier, you can probably finish the whole park and still come back and ride it a second time before you're at the end of your day. So I will tell you your second money saving tip, Genie Plus Lightning Lane and then Express Passover at Universal, not worth it. Don't do it. Don't spend the money. Listen to those episodes. Listen to our rope drop episode, and we will tell you how to beat the lines over there, specifically with single rider. So go there. Next on the list is Park Hopper over at Disney. Skip the Park Hopper. Don't use it. The only time I would ever recommend using Park Hopper is if you have two or fewer days to visit the parks and you want to get multiple parks in. Then at that point, okay, it may be worth doing Park Hopper so that way you can go hit your three or four or five rides at one park that you absolutely wanted to hit and you love and then hop over to another one, knock out that one because you don't have four days to stay out there at the Disney parks. I can tell you right now, the only park hopper that we ever do is at Universal Orlando, and we do the park to park pass because you can do both parks in one day. So that way, if you're on the ground out in Orlando for a total of five days, you can hit your four Disney parks with one park per day pass, and then you can park hop that park over at Universal and hit both of those because they can totally be done in one day. And we will talk about that on our rope drop strategy for Universal Orlando. Out in Anaheim, Universal's only a half-day park anyways. You're going to spend a full day at Magic Kingdom and probably a full day at California Adventure as well. So with those, there's no point in doing Park Hopper over there. Plus, Park Hopper is going to cost you quite a bit more. It is a one-time fee no matter how many days you go. So that is a benefit of it. But I'll tell you, you can do a full day at each park. That's what we normally do. We usually buy a four-day ticket when we go to Orlando for Disney. We do one park per day. We spend the whole day there. We try to plan so that we're doing like a Animal Kingdom towards the middle because that's the one we're going to spend the least amount of time in. And that way we can go back to the pool, rest our feet just a little bit, uh, especially if we have a couple more days to knock out while we're out there. So skip Genie Plus, skip Lightning Lane, skip DVC, skip Park Hopper for Disney. Now, we do, again, recommend it over at Universal. Uh, this is the fourth tip. This one is no longer being offered post-COVID, but it could come back very quickly, and that is the Disney Dining Plan. Skip it. It is not worth it. When you add up what you spend on the Disney Dining Plan, and then you see how many credits are utilized getting a snack in the park or a quick service meal in the park, it is not worth it. You are better off just paying cash for those items or using your card for those items eat when you want to eat. Don't worry about doing the Disney dining plan. That's a lot to coordinate anyways. And you are going to spend more than it's worth. Again, this is one of those factors. Go through these last couple ones. Genie Plus, Lightning Lane, Park Hopper, Dining Pass. These are all things of convenience. Disney is going to price up anything of convenience. If you're just going to go out and get your churro, get your Mickey pretzel, get your really cool drink or get your blue milk, green milk over at Galaxy's Edge, at Disney parks and you're going to do all that, don't do the dining plan. It's not worth it. You can still do your reservations. You can still do your meals at the quick service or the sit down restaurants up there. And it's going to be cheaper than the dining plan. So that is one that we definitely say skip. This fifth one, this one is actually really ironic because people don't quite understand how it works. And that is the photo pass. So Disney's got this really cool feature called PhotoPass that you can pay extra for. And with PhotoPass, anywhere you see a cast member with their camera out there, they will take pictures for you. They will scan your ticket or your Magic Band if you're in Orlando. And you're going to have online access to all those photos for your group for that time that you were out there. In addition to that, you're also going to get all the ride photos, which is really cool. So when you're on the Tower of Terror and everyone's faces are screaming or their eyes are huge because they're about to be dropped or you're on a roller coaster, all of those ride pictures are able to also be linked to your photo pass. So you're going to get all those as well. You just need to stop when you come off the ride and make sure you scan your magic band or your ticket to get those. Here's the tip, though. Not everybody in your party needs photo pass. In fact, only one person needs photo pass. So if you have a group or a family that's larger, only pay for it once. Now, 
we do like it. We do pay for it. It is part of our annual pass that we have at Disney World. But we only paid for it on my wife's ticket. And the reason is she's the one who organizes all the photos. She's the one who builds all the collages or the vacation books from our trip. She's the one who posts the Facebook. So we made sure she's the one with photo pass. She scans her stuff everywhere we go and she gets access to all those photos. I don't need them. She can send them to me anytime that we want. Once she's got access to them. If there's ever a ride she doesn't go on, simply enough, we just take a picture of that photo when we're coming off. It has a code on it. She'll go put that code into her photo pass and poof, the picture's in there. So photo pass, only one person needs to pay for it. So if you're thinking, yes, we want the photo pass, we want to get all those professional photo shots all around the park and especially in front of the castle, by all means, do it, but only pay for it for one person. You don't need to pay for it for everyone in your group. So that's something that a lot of people don't think about. Next on our list is when you're dining at Disney or Universal, because uh, we will have episodes on both, we will talk about where are the best places to eat and what are the best foods in the park. More often than not, the quick service restaurants have just as good food as the uh, big sit-down restaurants. Now, the experience is going to be very different. The sit-down restaurants that you can get reservation for, some of them have character dining. And in fact, one of our absolute favorites is Tusker House over at Animal Kingdom. And it's probably one of the best restaurants at Disney. The food over there is phenomenal. It's traditionally, it's a buffet style, but during COVID and post-COVID, they now do it family style where they bring all the food to your table and you're able to go through and eat all that. It's also a character dining location where Mickey and all of Mickey's friends are going to come around in their safari get up and they're going to meet you at every single table. So you get a good chance to get autographs, to take pictures with Mickey and all of his friends. So that's a really cool feature as well. So we don't want to downgrade any of those or say it's not worth the experience. They are totally worth the experience. But does every single meal have to be eaten at a sit down restaurant? By all means, no. And in fact, if you're doing more quick service and you stay very agile and mobile, you're going to get more out of your day and you're going to get to ride more rides and you're going to get to keep moving. So for example, and this is what we like to do. If we're at Magic Kingdom in Orlando and we start to get hungry, there is over by Fantasyland, there's the Cheshire Cafe. That's not even quick service. That's just a window. We are going to go get uh, one of their croissant Cheshire Cats tails that are really great. They've also got some other cool treats and some drinks. We're going to go grab those. That's going to take us five minutes and boom, we are back in line, ready to go. We're going to go get a LeFou's brew when we're back by Ariel's uh, ride, Undersea Adventure. And we're going to drink the LeFou's brew while we're in line. We're going to go get the blue or green milk while we're out there at uh, Galaxy's Edge. And we're going to go take that as we walk through the park and, and keep going. As you can tell, we like to eat as we move. This is a huge tactic, especially at Epcot. It's even more so if you're going during the food and wine festival, go to the kiosks, try all the foods, make your way through the park. You do not need to go sit down and do the sit down meals every single time. You are going to get plenty to eat from the less expensive quick service style stations around the parks. So because of that, you can save money by not reserving every single lunch and dinner. If you're doing the big restaurants, you're doing the space to 20 or like Tusker house, like I said, that can be upwards of $70 a person. If you go to quick service, you can get out for less than $10 a person or just over $10 a person. And we like to share meals quite often because we're going to stand to stand. We like trying out all the different foods that are out there. So that is a great way to save some money is skip the sit down restaurants. You only need to do a couple big reservations per trip. Spend the rest of your time out there hitting the stands, getting the snacks and enjoying things out there. Okay, so our next tip over there is the seasonality of the tickets uh, prices in the hotel. So this is something that has changed very recently, especially for Disney, but not as much so for Universal because they've always had pricing by demand. But Disney obviously prices their tickets in their hotels lower in the off season than they do in the high season. For example, one of the slowest months all year is late September before they kick off the Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party or the Halloween Horror Nights out at Universal. The reason is kids are back in school. It's post-Labor Day. There's no big holidays around there. And so that third and fourth week of September, if they haven't started the Halloween parties yet, are a very slow time, which in fact is why they have now started bumping the Halloween parties further back into September is to help drive tourism during that time. 
So if you go during that time of year or you go during February, you're going to find the lowest ticket prices and the least expensive hotels. Now, of course, if your family's all going to go, you're probably going to have to pull your kids out of school to go during that time. And that's what a lot of parents don't want to do or schools don't want you to do. So that's a good time to go if you want to save money. But it's also a challenge if you have kids that are in school. So you can always look at seasonality of the tickets and the hotel prices. Of course, if you're a couple, and in fact, I talk to a lot of couples that are newlyweds, they're doing this for their honeymoon. This is their first trip out there. You especially, I will tell you, take your vacations at that point in time. Go in February, go in September. Go when spring break, it's not happening. Go when no one else is going to the parks. Typically, the crowd levels, if you listen to the crowd level episode, are going to be very close to the same just because enough people are willing to travel and or go internationally that the reservation system is going to get booked out. But you will typically see smaller crowds at Disney Springs or maybe not all the reservations are taken and you have a lighter day at the parks, but you're going to save money if you go at that time of the year. So that is always a good thing to think about is when do I want to go during the year? Now, of course, if you're going to go during the summer, during spring break, during Christmas break, you, of course, are going to spend more money than you would otherwise because they're going to upcharge you for all that. Again, Universal has been doing this for years. Disney just jumped on the bandwagon with their variable pricing, and that's going to cause a difference in what you spend. The next tip is actually very counterintuitive. And it's going to totally depend on what your budget is and how you like to travel and what you want to do going to Disney. And that tip is stay more days. Okay. And again, that's counterintuitive because right out of the gates, you're going to realize, hey, if I stay more days, I'm paying for more hotel. I am paying for a rental car for longer. I'm paying for more food. Yes, those are all totally true. However, if you do stay more days, you do know the longer you stay, the longer ticket packages you buy, the less you're going to pay per day. So that is a way to save money if you want to go multiple days or hit each park multiple times. I will even go to the next step and say, if you're willing to do that and you're planning to stay a while, it is worth looking at annual passes. Now, today, that only works at Universal because Universal is the only one selling them. But at Disney, if they ever do reopen up their annual passes for people that don't live in Florida, if you want to stay multiple days and you're going to be out there a while, it is definitely worth looking at an annual pass. And we're going to talk about that again later here in our list. But the more days you stay, the less you pay per day. Okay. So again, counterintuitive, but a way to save a little bit money there. Now, jumping into the food and drink area outside of the restaurants, let's talk next about drinks and specifically water, because you should be hydrating yourself while you're out there. My sister's big into fitness, and so we always like to joke, hydrate or dehydrate, because if you do not get enough water, that you will die. So it is important for you to take a water bottle with you and drink plenty of water while you're out there. But here's the tip. You are allowed to take a refillable water bottle with you into the parks. You can have it filled with water from your hotel or wherever you're staying as you come in, and you're able to drink that throughout the day. So that's a savings right there is because you're not having to buy that. Once you're in the park, the parks also have uh, water fountains throughout all the parks. Also, every single park, every park I've ever been to, if you ever go to a quick service counter and you ask for a cup of ice water, that is usually free. Okay, so you can always get free water in a cup from any quick service restaurant. Now, if you look at their menu, they're going to show you the bottle of water the Sani water, Aquafina, they're going to show that to you up on the board and you're going to pay about $3.50 or $4 per bottle of water. So of course, if you'd like to, you can buy a bottle of water, especially when you're in Orlando, because Orlando, the water there is very smelly if you're getting it out of the fountains. So if you listen to our top things to bring with you to the park episode, we talk about water bottles and some of them have charcoal filters and we recommend that in Orlando. But that's a way that you can refill your bottle anywhere you go and you can drink it and it's not going to smell or taste funny because that charcoal filter is going to clean all that out for you. So you want to always be sure that you're getting water. Uh, Water is free. Bring in your water bottle. That is free. They are not going to stop you. You can also bring in your own snacks. That's a way to save some money there. People will go to Walmart, buy a whole thing at granola bars and bring them in with them or do something like that. In addition to that, Universal has... Uh, refillable soda bottles. So like huge water bottles with those huge funny straws, you can get a refillable one. So if your family likes to drink soda and they drink a lot of it, 
you can get one of those and they will let you refill. I believe it's every, it's either every 15 minutes or every 30 minutes. They do have a QR code on the bottom or a way to scan the bottom to know how quickly you're filling your bottle. Because what they don't want you to do is go fill it, go fill up three other people's bottles, come back, fill it again, fill up more people's bottles. So they do have a time limit. You can't go back immediately. You do have to wait a little bit, um, but you're able to refill that throughout the day. Those are obviously more expensive. They're in the teens. I believe they're about $15 for the bottle for the day. But like we do, there's three of us. We will buy one and we are not afraid of germs in our immediate family. So my wife, my daughter, and myself, we will share the same bottle and uh, we will go out and refill that with soda throughout the day. That is much cheaper than paying four or $5 per fill up just because you're going to get so much more of it. And then what we like to do, because at Universal, they have those cool Coke machines where you change the flavors. We'll let someone else each time go get the new drink and they'll pick their flavor and they'll pick what they want. And then we'll share that until uh, it's time for us to get another one or until we drink it and we'll go do something different. So that way our daughter gets a chance to pick what she wants. I usually pick a Diet Cherry Coke. So does my wife. So that makes it real easy between the two of us. But then my daughter gets a chance to do it as well. So get those refillable drinks out there as well as like Disney has refillable popcorn. That's a great opportunity out there, but that's going to save you some money as you go through the parks. Next is you want to buy things like your Mickey ears, the cool headbands with the ears on top, autograph books. If you want to get pins and you want to do pin trade, any type of souvenir you can buy in advance of going to Disney and take it with you, bring it into your luggage and have it at the hotel to give to your kids. For example, if you know your kid's going to want a plush Mickey, Buy it in advance. You could even probably wrap it or keep it in, in something. And then when they see it at the parks, just say, hey, yeah, we'll get it and we'll have it at the room for you. And you already have it because a plush Mickey done by Disney is going to look almost exactly the same, no matter if you buy it at the park or you buy it at Walmart before you go or a toy store before you go. You can even buy them online at Amazon. So that's going to save you money because that's going to be less expensive to do that. Specifically, though, things like the autograph books or the Mickey ears are way less expensive outside of the parks before you go. And then that way you can wear them into the park when you go. You don't have to go through all the stores and go find them all. And in fact, take it a step further. And I'm going to highly recommend going to Etsy. If you go onto Etsy and search Mickey ears, you're going to find very unique ones that are not for sale in the parks because they're made by another individual. Some of those are amazing, and I want to encourage everyone, go out and check Etsy if you are interested in Mickey ears, because they have versions for guys, they have versions for girls, they have versions for kids, and you can find your favorite characters out there on Etsy, and you're going to help support a small business. It's going to be less expensive than the parks, and that's a great way to get your ears. For us, our shop for I Can Do This All Day merchandise is also available out there on Etsy, so you can go search that, and you can purchase some of that. We, like I said, have backpacks, water bottles, those kinds of things. Next tip is if you're going to Orlando, Universal or Disney, buy and bring your own poncho. Now, of course, I am talking about probably the dollar store ponchos, the ones that are very small, that are a single use. You're going to tear them off when you're done and throw them all away. You can buy a whole set of those at Walmart and bring those in with you, or you can even order them on Amazon. But in Orlando, it rains almost every single day. You are going to want a poncho almost every single day. And if you buy the disposable ones, then you know when the rain stops and it's still all wet, you can tear it off, you can throw it in a trash can, and you don't have to worry about mildew or any type of buildup as you're staying out in Orlando because it's very humid and things don't dry very well there. You can also, if you have a nice rain jacket, bring it with you. If you're buying a poncho in the parks, those run $12 to $14. And the ponchos in the park are tough to find, especially when it starts raining, because everybody goes and buys them. Those ponchos are a bit more durable, but we have found that they typically only last about a week's worth of park visits, so about four to five visits, before they start tearing and falling apart. So you're better off just go spend four or five bucks on disposable ones. You can throw them away every single time that you use them and bring those with you into the park. So ponchos are definitely a way to save some money before you go in there. The next one, this is one that some people are going to scoff at and say, I don't know that I want to do that. But I will tell you right now, credit cards, using your credit card or hooking it to your Apple Pay or to your Magic Fan is a great way to save money. And the reason is, is many credit cards offer cash back on your purchases. And in fact, some offer multiples of cash back, depending on where you shop or where you spend your money. 
So let's say I've saved up all year to go to Disney. I've got a couple thousand dollars saved up for that trip. I can keep that in my savings account, use my credit card, get my cash back, and then use my savings account to pay off that credit card. If you do it in the first billing cycle of that credit card, you're going to get all the reward points and cash back, but you're not going to pay any interest or any fees. So that's a great way to also save some money is because you're going to get that cash back. Again, I will put in the links the Southwest card. That is by far the best way to get free flights, earn a companion pass, and really save a ton of money on your trip. So look for that down there in the links uh, in the description of the podcast. Last three, annual pass. We are back to an annual pass at Disney. So I mentioned earlier, if you're going to stay more days, get an annual pass if they're available. Currently, they're only available for Florida residents. Unfortunately, those aren't out there for everyone. But you can get an annual pass and an annual pass doesn't just save you money for park tickets if you're going to go a lot, but they also give you a ton of perks. The top three perks that I believe are out there for all annual pass holders at Disney are free parking. That'll save you $25 a day. And when you think about uh, the fact that we've got three people in our household that have the annual pass, when we go in October, we are going with uh, two other families. So there will be 11 of us there. We have three rental cars. So one of each of us will ride in each of the rental cars and we will be able to get that rental car in for free. So we are going to, in essence, save $75 in parking fees per day. Now, yes, we could have gone out and gotten a a 15 passenger van and gone in just once, but those are really expensive. We have instead three compact cars. Those cost us a fraction of what the van did. And then with that, we're able to get them all free into the parks over there at Disney. So parking, you're going to get That's $25 savings per day. Next is you get 10 to 20% off usually on your dining at Disney. And the reason I say usually is not every stand offers it. So there are some stands that you do not get a discount at. But for the most part, all of your sit down restaurants, all of your quick service places like that are going to give you 10 to 20% off depending on what level of pass you have and depending on what restaurant you're at. So that is a way to save some money. What we like to do. So quick tip here is when we go with a large group, we will get a single check. I will pay the check with my annual pass and save the entire group that 10 to 20%. And then what we'll do is we'll take the receipt, we'll figure it all out, and then they will use Apple Pay Cash, Venmo, uh, Zelle. They'll use one of those services and they will pay me the money, okay? So that way they all get to save 10 or 20% as well, even though they are not annual pass holders. I am, but I get it for the whole party. And then the advantage for me is I will use my Southwest credit card. I will earn a ton of miles and then they're going to pay me cash to pay it right back off. And so I'll get that paid off right away. So great tip and trick there. Actually, that one could be, and I can do this all day, tip of the week, but that is not it. We have that one coming here in a couple of minutes. So 10 to 20% off dining at Disney. And then you also get that same discount on merchandise. That is universal across all the stores at Disney. So you definitely, if you have an annual pass, want to show that to them, you're going to get that savings there. And then again, if we go in a group or with friends or family, we will go up and we will buy the merchandise with our annual pass and they will Venmo us back whatever we spent. They want to buy their shirt. We'll go up there. We'll pay for it, get that 20% off. They will then Venmo us exactly what's on the receipt. They save that 20% as well. And then now I get the points on my card. So that is an awesome tip and trick to use while you're out there. Let's hop over now to Universal. So at Universal, some of the passes, only two of the four get free parking. So keep that in mind. You definitely want to check out those passes, find out which ones get the free parking and then make your decision. Same like the photo pass, you could have one person buy the higher level pass to get free parking and have the rest of your people in the party buy a lower pass as long as you're not going to run into any blackout dates. So that is a way to save money there as well, is staggering who has those passes. But you can get free parking. The very top pass also gets valet and the VIP parking for free, which is a huge savings uh, because those, I believe, are $35 or $40 for VIP and then it's $75 for Uh, valet. Huge savings there. Again, some passes, depends on the pass, depends on the restaurant, get the same 10 or 15% off food and merchandise, just like Disney. So same tricks apply there. You're going to want to have one person who has the annual pass go and pay for everything, Venmo them back. So that way you get the savings as well. They get the points. But at the end of the day, that's a great way to save money there. Okay. So we've been through about a dozen tips. 
We are now down to the very final one. And this is our I can do this all day tip of the day for this week on saving money. And that is the Disney Chase card. And again, I know a lot of people don't love credit cards, but there is a specific reason, actually a couple, that you're going to want to get this card. So first, if this is your first trip to Disney in a long time or you've not been there and you don't have the Chase card, when you go to buy your tickets, we recommend go through the link that we have on our podcast or on our YouTube video. And the reason is when you apply, you can get upwards of $300 cash back when you spend $1,000. So if I'm going to buy my tickets and I've got a family of four and it's going to cost me nearly a thousand bucks, I can use that card and get those tickets and I'm going to get 300 cash back immediately in the form of a statement credit. So that's going to save me money on my tickets right there right out of the gates. And if I have a smaller family, don't hit a thousand bucks, I can use that card to purchase my airline tickets or purchase my hotel. And now I will pass a thousand dollars and I'm going to save that 300. That's a 30% savings right off the bat with whatever you use on that card. So that's a huge advantage right there. Again, we have it in the links, go click that link, and then you're able to uh, get that savings there. But in addition to that, when you use your chase card at the Disney parks, just like the annual pass, you're going to get 10% off dining and merchandise. Okay, so a little bit less of a discount, but still a discount nonetheless. If you're going to all the stores, you're going to get 10% off. So if you're with a group, exact same thing that we just talked about. Have one person get that card, have them pay for everything so that you get 10% off everything you do, pay them back. That's a way for everybody to save money through a single card. But the advantage for the card holder is now you're getting the points and the Disney card points give you Disney reward dollars that you can use then to spend at the parks or spend on other Disney merchandise. We like to get all those rewards built up. We'll see something really cool in the parks that we want. Then what we'll do is we'll just go to shop Disney and order it online and use our dollars there to get that item. Once we've done that and we've used the card and we've been on our trip, we highly recommend then close the card Okay, it does have a $49 annual fee, but close that card so that you're not being charged the annual fee in future years. But then after two years, you can reapply and do this all over again, meaning you can get that $300 promotional credit. So that's a great way. If I don't go all the time, if I don't go every year, I'm going to get a $300 credit. I'm going to save 10% at the parks on food and dining. I'm going to get all these cool Disney dollars that I can use for Disney purchases and then when I get home, maybe I buy a couple more things and get all those Disney dollars used up. But now I can close that account. And then the next time I go in a couple of years, I can do it all again. Whereas if you hold on to it, you're just going to keep paying that annual fee and you don't get that promo. If you close it and wait two years, then you are eligible to do that again. I have done that personally twice. And both times, that's how I went to Disney for almost free. Please go listen to that episode. That's going to be your best way to find out how to save even more money. But here are a dozen or so tips and tricks on saving money at the parks. And I guarantee you, if you follow these, you're going to spend a fraction of what your friends and family spend when they go to Disney. I have talked to friends and family that have gone to Disney for a week, which is how long we usually go, four days at the parks, one day over at Universal, so five full days. We fly on days uh, one, day seven. And I've talked to people that have done the exact same trip, and they have spent double what we spent and double when you're talking a few thousand dollars is a lot of money for the exact same experiences that my family and I had. So is it worth it? That's up for, to you to decide. So do I want to do DVC? Do I want to stay on resort? How am I going to pay for my flights? All those kind of things. Go listen to that episode. We're going to give you lots of tips and tricks there on how to go to Disney for almost free. And the reason we say almost is you are going to pay annual fees on a couple of these cards to do it. But in doing so, you're going to be able to save a ton of money going to Disney. I have literally done a whole week in Disney for less than $1,000. When you imagine that you're going to spend probably four to five grand to go to do it for less than a thousand is a huge saving. So trust me when I say I've done it personally. Go out and listen to those episodes. They're a great way to learn how to do that. And then you, again, can do that multiple times throughout your life. You can do it, wait a couple of years, do it again, wait a couple of years, and just keep doing that. But listen to that video for those tips and tricks. So thank you for joining us today. We hope that you saved some money today. If you did, hop on over to Patreon, support us there. You're going to get access to those other episodes on saving money and the Butterbeer episode. And that helps keep our podcast going as well. So we appreciate our subscribers over there and our supporters at Patreon. 
at a drier dose of Disney. So check us out there, but have yourself a magical day and we will talk to you next time. Bye-bye.